Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Today is the first day of my first round of alternates from the latest Paper Pumpkin, the August Time for Cake edition. And I I just, I got it today and I was like, oh, I have to start. So I came out into my craft room and I did quite well. There'll be definitely way more to come. So without further delay, I am going to get started. First thing I'm going to do, however, is just to remind you or show you if you haven't seen it before. They come with, usually with envelopes that the colour goes down all the way down inside and creates lovely extra designer series paper. There are little extras and little punch outs and the three card bodies this time. This one was quite interesting because it has a lot of folds to it and a postcard size. This one is pretty self-explanatory where it falls in half and this one is double-sided. And they've taken now, I think, just to giving us double-sided so we can adjust them. You don't have to, you can make them exactly according to the kit and each kit comes with its, it comes with the stamps. It, if it's your first kit, it comes with a block and it even comes with the adhesive. The only thing it doesn't come with is a pair of scissors and I think most people can rustle up a pair of scissors but what I like to do is split open the envelopes so just to show you how to do that on a stamping up paper trimmer the trough is this lovely sort of dark charcoal grey and I'm just going to line up the edge of the envelope and take literally a slither and then turn it over and I'm going to slither it open on the other side and then when you open it I'm going to cut it just shy of where the fold is at the bottom if you try and cut into something that's already been folded unless your blade is brand new and razor sharp it can fray quite a bit so you know I've moved it over the same size of a slither and this, never discard this because this is a lovely piece of plain white card stock, envelope stock, that you can put inside a dark coloured card. So that's all the pieces. And here we have the envelope cut open. And the reason I'm showing you that is because I'm going to be using various ones as I go through the cards that I'm making. The first card is the one that looks like a piece of cake. This one. And unfortunately, there wasn't really much I could alternate with it. It's more or less just the card with a little bit of extras done to it. So what I did was I took the card front, bringing all the pieces that the kit suggests you have. So I cut it down. I cut it down to four and an eighth so you can see that the seam is there. I cut it down to four and an eighth and I trimmed the slither off the top to make it five and three eighths and then what I did was I took a piece of petal pink cardstock and it is eight and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter and then it's just folded in half so this is effectively going to become the base of the card and we're just going to stick this on like I said, this one is not the most adventurous alternate, really. All I've done is save the back piece for another project. So it's almost, watch this space and let's see what we can do with the rest. So pop that on. That's pretty straightforward. And then in the kit came, I don't know why there was two of them, but two sets of these and they've each got three. And there are nine cards in this three, each of three designs. So it would just be that they make themselves. Oh, here's the one where I had already taken it out of. So I'm not quite sure why we got two sets, but never say never. And then the shape of the colors, pretty straightforward. There's not really much to change there either. Oh, I can hear my phone ringing in my house. So we will put 
this one in the middle so it looks like a lovely yummy cake put this one further down and this one at the top and then what we have is a piece where you would stamp it's time for cake and you're using the knight of navy now normally the kit comes with a little ink spot and i normally bring in my big ones but just so you can see that the spot is as good an ink as any big ones i'm actually going to use when it calls for knight of navy that's what i'm actually going to use so that's the time for cake and then they gave us these lovely little punch outs with the rose gold detail on it and then there's a stamp which just adds detail to the candle so i'm going to stamp that onto there without trying to get my head in the shot that's my usual trick and then i'm just going to build it as per the instructions so i'm going to stick time for cake on hooray on the hooray actually is a sticker which is lovely because then it's so skinny you wouldn't have to cut it out but there are dies that come each quarter with stamping up kits now and i do have the add-on which is hooray but of course if you don't have that and you don't have the cutting machine that would just make it a little bit harder so i don't even know if it calls for dimensionals but i'm just going to pop it on it's time for cake put the candle on the top because it's got that lovely bit of bling and then last but not least look at this it's a copper fork how lovely is that so you could use the glue dots but i'm going to just quickly use my rolling adhesive so that is the first card like i say if you look at the picture and you look at the card there really isn't much to it it's just on a petal pink backing so i suppose you could say the potential is to come for that one so that's the first card the second card is using the envelope so what i did was i took the envelope here are all the pieces so it got cut down and we've got this lovely curved little part and there's a greeting in the stamp set that says happy birthday so i'm going to ink that up with a little spot stamp that into the middle of the curve because it's curved nicely for us and that's that so what i need to do is cut this down so that it fits so i took a piece of moody mauve which is the ink that matches and then i'm just going to cut down the inside of the envelope i'm literally just going to cut the white off and that will just give us the quarter inch border around so instead of using a card front i'm going to just be using actually that needs a little bit more slivered off it i guess because where it was at the top it was the top of the envelope and it didn't have a white piece so now we've got this cut to size so i'm just going to quickly attach that and make the most of the envelope i've got the happy birthday and then these balloons were supposed to be on the card with the little balloon section but I thought I would save that for another project and I would just attach these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the big one with dimensionals. And the little ones can just tuck 
in behind. So again, it's a pretty simple card, but it doesn't have to be all singing, all dancing. What I'm trying to do is make interesting cards and save the supplies so I can multiply them. So, whoops. So we'll chuck that in behind there. We'll chuck this one in behind. We can put the greeting on with dimensionals, just a couple. Whoops. I love dimensionals. Those of you who watch my videos know that I'm a bit of a di dimension and bling. That's what it's all about. So we'll pop that across the top. And then, of course, you know, it follows the curvature. And then what they gave us was this lovely rose gold shiny twine. And what I did was I went ahead and tied a little bow using the bunny ear method. And then I am going to put one of the glue dots at the bottom of the balloon and peel the backing off. But the nice thing about glue dots is you can actually roll them up so they're not the full size stick the little bow to it and then remember when I said we had the backing of the envelopes which I've just gone and lost because this is quite a dark cardstock what I'm going to do is quickly cut down the back oops so I'll I'm just going to cut the bit really where the glue was on that just needs a little bit extra cutting off and it doesn't have to be any particular size as long as it's even. Just cut the curve off. I don't want it to look too much like it was an envelope scrap, do we? And then this piece can just get attached to the inside of the card. And then when it's dark, there's a nice light piece that you can put a greeting on. So there's the second card. It's got lovely bling to it. It's got the lovely little bow and the curvature and it's just mostly using the envelope pieces. So that's two down. And then the third card. Ooh, okay. Let me just move my scraps out of the way. The third card is the one that has the base the postcard base and these pieces. Now that is just too much temptation if you ask me. So what I did was I went ahead and I cut it into quite a few pieces. The directions and the dimensions will always be on my blog and I'll do them card by card and I will have little, if this has got an intricate cutting pattern, I will have a diagram, a template of that, so you can see what the measurements are. So the first card, what I did was I took the card base and I cut it in half. And then I cut two windows out of each piece. So I've got two layers that go on two cards. The card itself is basic white and it's five and a half by four and a half, scored at four and a quarter but we're going to do it landscape wise so this is the two pieces that I use so this is one and this is the other so this one I already stuck down and I thought the best way to show you how to do that would be to cut it on a plain piece of white cardstock so if you can imagine this is the pink piece because of course I don't want to use a pink piece because I'm going to use that for another project what you need to do is get in the paper trimmer and it's already got my little scratchy directions on but I will do it so that it's a proper template on my blog I'm just going to stand up which puts me closer to the camera so excuse me if it sounds like I'm shouting so I'm going to line it up on the right hand side at three eighths and then on the paper trimmer I'm going to cut from three quarters of an inch you can see it on the measurer down to four and seven eighths which is all the way down here so when this little mark gets to four and seven eighths you know you've reached the right place and then I'm going to turn it over 
and move it to three eighths on the right hand side pop the paper cutter in at three quarters and cut down to four and seven eighths and then what you need to do is pop it in at five eighths and you should find that you can cut from this cut line already down to the next one and then when you turn it round if you put it at five eighths on the paper trimmer and go from this cut line down to this cut line you will have the piece that pops out i can actually sit down i don't need to stand up and yell into the camera that direction and then what you're left with is this piece to go on the card and these two pieces to do a subsequent project with so I'm going to put these away very carefully and keep them for something else so this was just the sample to show you how to do it but all the measurements and the step by steps of how to cut this window out will be on my blog so like I say this one I'd already attached this one I'm going to do with you. So it's eight and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter. And then we're going to put adhesive on the back of the half of a card. So we're getting two cards out of one card base. And we've just added a little bit of basic white cardstock to it. So then what I did was I cut off. This is the card in this is the piece of that navy blue card in its entirety. So you can see I cut off this one and I went up between where the sparkles are on the candles. I thought that was a safer place to cut them so this, these sparkles go on this side and then it leaves all of these sparkles for candles on another piece because I didn't want to leave a candle sparkleless so this is the piece that we have left and that is going to fit over there just nicely so it will hide the fact there's a big gaping hole behind it and then I thought oh that would be nice if only I could replicate that so what I did was I took the next piece along and it seemed that there were straight edges. So I cut up between these two and cut them in half. Um, <laughs> it's like, oh wait, where is that on this card? It's here somewhere. No, this is the one that I cut down. This is the one that I cut off. You see on the on the next one, that's the piece that got cut off. And then between here and here, there's a lovely straight edge between these candles. So I thought I would just cut those straight edged. So it wasn't taking away that. I didn't want it to be sort of half a candle. And where has the body of that candle gone? I wanted the edges to be straight. So that's what I cut out of the next piece and I mean look I've still probably got about two or three cards more out of this one piece so then I brought in a piece of basic white which is the same dimensions as this one which is actually three and three quarters by four and a quarter so that's the piece that's the same this one's pre-printed this one we are going to build and the two straight edges mean it doesn't look like half a candle is missing. So then what I did was I popped two candles out of the selection that they gave us. And I thought, oh, I could add those on, but they seem to be awfully short and just plain blue. So what I did was I took the edge of the envelope when it looks like this and I just cut a quarter inch piece out of there so now what I can do and I chevroned 
the top. So what I'm going to do is bring in my silicone mat so I don't get glue everywhere all over my projects. And I can pop that on top of that blue, but it chevrons in and it looks like another candle. And I did the same to the pretty in pink envelope. So I'm just going to chevron the top of that one. Put a little bit of glue on and stick it to the navy blue short candle which came out of the printouts. And now we've got two nice, much longer candles, whoops, that we can use. So what I wanted to do was stamp on these two white pieces and make sure I've got the candles peeking out. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue more, oops, where I'd used it to attach it to the blue. And then attach these two pieces. The only thing we have to remember is we want the straight candles on these ones to be on the inside edge. So if we line this up with the edge, but before we commit it to being, oops, that wasn't very straight, Alison. Actually, let me do it on. Yeah, so it's a, there's a bit more of a contrast. So straight candle wants to go on the inside edge. And this one can just peek out, trying to be a little bit reminiscent of this one. And then this one, we want the straight edge. So we'll line that up on that side. And we'll have this candle peeking out a little bit like that. So now we've got two candles. And of course, they're not the same, but they're pretty similar. And they're not bad considering we made them out of envelope scraps. So what I need to do now is bring in the stamp which says Make-A-Wish. And I am going to do that in Night of Navy. So we're going to make a Knight of Navy wish. Plum in the middle. Ooh, that's really quite nice. It's the first time I've stamped it. I didn't realize it had such a lovely scrolly script. And then we can put make a wish on that one too. And then what we're going to do, stamp a couple of balloons. So I got the balloon stamps out of the kit. I was going to cut them out of the extra piece and I thought, no, I don't think I want to sacrifice that yet. So what I'm going to do with the coordinating colours on the back of the instructions, it always tells you the colours that coordinate. And one of them is well, petal pink, which we made the card with, pretty in pink and wild wasabi. So wild wheat, wild wasabi. Gosh, wasabi was an old, old colour. So wild wheat. So I'm actually going to bring in a little scratch of paper because I'm not sure that the wheat won't be a little bit too strong. But we'll give it a try. So we'll stamp it on a scrap and then stamp it on the card. Stamp it on a scrap and stamp it on the card. And then we'll use the new Pretty and Pink, which is one of the new in colours. And then put one at the bottom. And one at the top. And that just ties the whole birthday balloon theme in. And now we can attach these to their two bodies which have got that lovely hole that they're waiting to be disguised. You'll actually see this one has 
a seam has a fold score line but if you haven't folded it then it doesn't show on the other side because it actually runs down where the color changes so this one i am going to pop on there and this one is going to pop on there it covers the holes the candles look a little bit more interesting than just the plain navy blue so they're basically two the same one's official one's homemade there is the one with the candles and there's the hooray which really wasn't so much of an alternate it was more just a make do and pad it out but there you have it so like i say all the directions and dimensions will be on my blog if you like what you've seen please consider subscribing give me a thumbs up and absolutely check back often because now once i've started and i've cut into things i'm already seeing what i can use you know the extra piece that came out of here the templates will be on my blog so don't miss out and last but not least thanks so much for watching